Hello guys, welcome to MBBS Tutor and welcome to Pectoral Region class today from Anatomy. So the objectives are, you should know about the mammary gland, its blood supply, nerve supply, lymphatic drainage and clinical anatomy. On top of that, you need to know about the structures in the deep pectoral fascia, the clamp pectoral fascia, which is important questions and some mnemonics. The bones of upper limb and uh, importance of landmarks will be dealt later in a separate video. Superficial fascia. You should know about its contents, area of supply and the some muscles. So after the dissection of the skin, the main important structure is seen in the female body in this region. So here, if you see the area of coverage here, so the supraclavicular nerves cover the region from clavicle down to the second rib. So this is your second rib. And the second set, the anterior and lateral cutaneous branches extend into the intercostal nerves here and they supply until the skin below the second rib. Coming to the cutaneous vessels, they are very important in case of females because these are the ones which supply the breast. The anterior cutaneous nerves accompany with these perforating branches of internal thoracic artery. This is very important artery. And lateral cutaneous nerves are accompanied by lateral cutaneous branch of posterior intercostal artery. So it's not the anterior or the lateral, it's a posterior intercostal artery. And you can see the second, the uh, you can see the second, third and fourth perforating branches of the internal thoracic artery. So this is your internal thoracic artery. Now this is the first, this is second, third and fourth. You can see a second, third, fourth. And also it's supplied from the lateral thoracic artery here you can see. This is your lateral thoracic artery and lateral mammary branches and lateral and the anterior branches and the posterior branches. So coming to the breast and mammary gland is a very very important 10 mark question. So let us discuss uh, the following topics. The situation, the extent, the blood supply, the nerve supply, lymphatic drainage and the clinical anatomy related to the mammary gland. So coming to the situation, it is situated in the superficial fascia and is divided, divided into two, four quadrants. The upper medial, the lower upper lateral, the lower medial and the lower lateral. So we will give a code names for it, UL, UM, LL and LM. Suppose you have the breast here and these will be the quadrants. So this will be upper lateral, upper medial. This is a lower lateral and lower medial. This structure is called the axillary tail of spent, which passes in an opening called the foramen of Langer into the axilla. So, in the breast, it vertically extends from the second rib to the sixth rib. Horizontally, it extends from the lateral border of sternum to the mid axillary line. So, here you can see horizontally, it extends from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line. Here your sternum bone will be. So this is the lateral border. Coming to the next one is the space between the pectoral fascia, that is the deep fascia, and the loose areola tissue is called as retromammary space. This space is essential for the free movement of breast. Now why is this point important is that if there is a breast carcinoma, then this space will be filled with cancerous tissue and the fibrous stroma which we'll be learning about later. Uh, will be filled with these cells so there's no free movement and it gets kind of stuck in the place so that's one of the diagnosis for breast cancer so this space the breast lies over the pectoralis major muscle so here is the pectoralis major muscle here is the pectoralis minor external intercostal the skin the skin has a nipple just below the center of the breast so it's not exactly center and it is at the level of fourth intercostal space has a circular and longitudinal muscles and it has a rich nerve supply in many sensory endings. The skin around the nipple, so this is your nipple, the skin around it is called as areola. This region during pregnancy becomes enlarged, so it forms something called as tubercles of Mont Montgomery. Coming to the parenchyma that is under the skin, so you can see here the parenchyma compound tubulo alveolar gland. This point is very important to mention when you write it in exam. Each and every point that is written here is very very important. Okay, It has 15 to 20 lobules. The lactiferous sinus is seen here. So the lactiferous sinus is nothing but these are all the duct. These are the gland. And here the starting point of this like the drainage point is called the lactiferous sinus. From here it passes down to the nipple. The stroma. So the stroma is 
separated as fibrous stroma and fatty stroma. So the fatty stroma forms a major bulk of this tissue. So here you can see. And this fibrous septa is known as suspensory ligament of Cooper. So this is very important. So which we have described earlier that loose areola tissue is nothing but the ligaments of Cooper. So the fatty stroma forms a bulk of the breast tissue. Coming to the next slide, that is the blood supply of the breast. So here I have marked out the three main arteries which come here. Internal thoracic, that's a branch of subclavian artery. No? And lateral thoracic, superior thoracic and thoracoacromial artery. So there's a branch of axillary artery. Very, very important to note about this thing. Then the lateral branches of posterior intercostal arteries. So this is very, very important. One, two, three. Here, the breast tissue has a very huge blood supply. So you can see the lateral and superior thoracic, they're giving different branches. And the internal thoracic artery is also giving some branches to the breast tissue. The veins converge at the base. Now over the veins, they converge at the base of nipple and form anastomosing venous circles. So they drain in two sets. Okay, now this is very important. The superficial veins drains into the internal thoracic veins and superficial veins of neck. So here are some superficial veins. So here you can see uh, probably there are some superficial veins which run from the next external jugular vein and all these structures. So yes, coming back to the point is deep veins drains into the axillary and posterior intercostal vein. So all these veins, they run side by side with the arteries. Coming to the nerve supply, it is supplied with the anterior and the lateral cutaneous branches of 4th and 6th intercostal nerves. Remember the intercostal nerves are very very important. Once you come to thorax section also, it is very important to know about these intercostal nerves. Now, the secretion of breast milk is controlled by hormone prolactin. Probably you will be learning in physiology soon and secreted by the pars anterior of the hypophysis cerebri. So this is important. So here you can see the supraclavicular nerve, the lateral cutaneous branches of intercostal nerve, then anterior cutaneous branches of intercostal nerve. So these three supply the nerve supply. So coming to the lymphatic drainage, this is very important topic. You should not neglect this topic. When you come to clinical side, you will see uh, how the cancer spreads from this. So one of the more for uh, the spread of metastasis is by lymphatic drainage. Now. We have to know this because yes, the so malignant cells can spread by lymphatic channel. So let's know about some of the lymph nodes. It is very essential to know about the lymph nodes. So the lymph nodes are the anterior group of nodes. So lateral, the anterior group is somewhere here. When you will come to axilla, that's the next topic, you will be learning about the group of lymph nodes. So most of them will drain here. So one is the anterior group that is here. The internal memory or parasternal nodes that is here along the internal thoracic vessels. So internal thoracic will run here and here you have your internal memory nodes which is also called as parasternal nodes. So these are one of the nodes. So here we are done with it. Then lymph from the breast also reaches the supraclavicular nodes, cephalic. So here you have to see this supraclavicular nodes, cephalic, the posterior intercostal nodes subdiaphragmatic and subperitoneal lymph flexes. So subdiaphragmatic is here, subperitoneal is here and your supraclavicular nodes are here, your cephalic are here, the cephalic group. So these are all in the different ones which drain it. Is. So let us see the drainage, like 75% of the lymph drains in the axillary group of nodes. 20% is the internal memory nodes and 5% to the posterior intercostal nerves. So this is very very important. This is an important viva question. They ask it in viva. Then coming to the superficial drainage areas. So the superficial will drain except the nipple and areola. That's very important. And the deep uh, drain into the parenchyma, nipple and areola. Now other important points which is which is to be noted is sometimes they ask in viva what is the line of Schlutz? It's also called as the milk line or mammary ridge. So during the development of uh, a female child, so here you can see in the, the breast develops from the ectodermal thickening. So as a child gets development, 
so then slowly due to the presence of hormones also initially this small amount of breast but again it regresses until puberty so emastia's absence of breast these terms are very very important athelia is absence of nipple polymastia is supernumerary breast and gynecomastia is seen if you have to tell me in comments where is gynecomastia seen very common syndrome okay, so coming to the clinical anatomy mention just these three points first is body orange appearance why is this seen it is in viva which is asked and they may ask in three more questions where is body orange appearance is seen so when the cancer cells it blocks what does it do is like cancer cells which are there they infiltrate the lymphatics first then after proliferating in lymphatics they they proliferate in lymphatics and they reach any of the vessel they break the vessel wall and they start spreading it to other tissues so this is a stage where you call it as metastasis until that time it was there present locally but now it has gone to all other body parts the legs the like brain the liver the lungs and the bones it can reach any any site the most common site is the lungs and the liver so these two carcinomas are very common if breast cancer is left undiagnosed so here the cancer cells they block the superficial lymphatics leading to the edema of skin so here you can see it somewhat appears like this so this is body orange appearance right the cancer cells also infiltrate the stroma and causes yeah they infiltrate the fibrous stroma so this causes the lig- the suspensory ligaments to retract so because of this retraction there is a puckering of skin that is the folds of skin and incision of breast are usually made radially this is very important if you are interested in surgery any surgery is related to thorax well you have to avoid cutting the lactiferous duct so to avoid left cutting of lactiferous ducts you have to uh, keep radial incision so here you can see the picture like if breast cancer is untreated what are all the sites which are affected the mainly the brain the breast is a common site from breast lungs liver coming to the deep pectoral fascia the deep pectoral fascia it covers the pectoralis major muscle and the underlying structures superiorly it is attached to the clavicle anteriorly to the sternum and the muscles of pectoral region so coming to the muscles of pectoral there are three muscles the three main muscles another is the serratus anterior so the pectoralis major pectoralis minor and subclavius so let us learn about the origin insertion nerve supply and action whenever you are knowing about muscles you need to know at least the basic information about where is its origin and where is its insertion because in viva when you are asked about some specific points especially the humerus bone so you have to humerus and the clavicle these are the most asked later even the scapula which is behind here right so come to the next slide pectoralis major so now you can see the origin it has four different sites of origin but it has one common insertion so here is the origin so the clavicular fibers from the anterior surface of the two thirds of clavicle so here is your clavicle basically anterior two thirds so anterior two thirds of clavicle here will be your clavicular fibers and the manubrial fibers is the manubrial part of the sternum so here some fibers arise so this is the manubrial part from the breadth of manubrium and sternum up to sixth costal cartilage so this is important sixth costal cartilage will be around here somewhere okay sternocostal fibers from second to sixth costal cartilage this is called as sternocostal fibers sterno costal fibers all is this origin see and upon neurotic fibers from external oblique muscle of the abdomen that has a major muscle of the abdomen so here is the external oblique one now insertion now around here will be your humerus so in your humerus is behind in the lateral lip of bicepital groove so this is inserted by the bilaminar tendon in the lateral lip of bicepital groove of the humerus the mark the points which i am marking is very very important to note coming to the nerve supply is medial and lateral pectoral nerves very simple you know this already now actions actions are clavicular part so this is a clavicular part it produces a flexion of arm 
Sternocostal part is used for climbing and extension of flexed arm against resistance. It also acts as an accessory muscle during inspiration. Coming to the pectoralis minor. Coming to this picture, so you can see it origins from the costochondral junction. So here is your costochondral junction. So here you have the cartilage and here is the bone. So third, fourth and fifth ribs. It origins from here, right? And intervining fascia of external and intercostal muscle. So here will your external intercostal muscles be usually between the ribs. So it inserts into the medial and upper surface of the coracoid process. Look here, medial border and upper surface of coracoid process. Here, the nerve supply is again by medial and lateral pectoral nerves. Actions are it draws up the scapula forward. So since it is inserted here, you can see this coracoid process is a part of scapula. So when it contracts, it brings the scapula forward so that it can depress the point of shoulder and it helps the forced inspiration. Coming to the subclavius muscle, subclavius muscle, the first, uh, the origin is from the first rib of the costochondral junction. The insertion is in the subclavian groove. So here you can see the subclavian groove which is on the sternum. It is in the uh, posterior surface of the sternum. So here in the middle one third of clavicle is the subclavian groove. There it is seen. The nerve supply is nerve to subclavius. That is, it's from the brachial plexus, which will be taught later to you. Actions are, it studies the clavicle during movements of shoulder joint and forms a cushion of axillary vessels and trunks of the brachial plexus. So it acts like a cushion. So most of your look, here are the cords, here are the trunk, here are the divisions, here are the trunks, then here are the other nerve. Important thing, which we will learn about brachial plexus in very simple 10 minutes video probably later sometime. So this is an important five mark question. So here, st structures under cover of pectoralis major are, the bones are sternum, costal cartilage and the ribs, then the clavipetoral fascia, then the muscles are clavius, pectoralis minor, PMI is pectoralis minor, serratus anterior, intercostals and upper part of biceps brachii and coracobrachialis. I'll teach you about the arm later so you can know about this muscle more better. And the axillary vessels, the cords of brachial plexus. The cords of brachial plexus is very important. Coming to the clavicular fascia, it is sometimes asked for 3 marks or 5 marks sometimes. Very rarely 5 marks, but 3 marks is more common. What you have to do is take this diagram. This diagram is very important. Now, it is a fibrous sheet situated deep to the clavicular portion of pectoralis major muscle. It extends from the clavicle above to axillary fascia below. Right? So, from clavicle above to axillary fascia below. So, look at this. This is your clavicle and this is axillary fascia. So, here, first in the anterior part, like in the topmost part, it encloses the subclavis muscle and here, uh, here in between, it also encloses the pectoralis minor. This is a major, this is a minor. So this is your anterior, this is your posterior side. And this is the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Now that you learn about the two layers separately. And here you can see medially it is attached to the external intercostal muscles and laterally to the coracoid process. So medially you can see here, medially somewhere here it will be external to the costal muscles and laterally to the coracoid process. So you can remember this mnemonics that structures piercing the clavipectoral fascia are this very important call is a mnemonic cephalic C C is a cephalic vein A is acromiothoracic artery or thoracochromial artery the same artery then lateral pectoral nerve and lymphatics the lymphatics are mostly the axillary group of lymph nodes coming to the next slide serratus anterior it is also called as boxer's muscle so it arises from the eight digitations of the upper eight rib now yeah so you can see in this diagram here one two three four five six seven eight so these eight they arise from here from the mid axillary plane then the first digitation arises from the posterior triangle of neck here you can see the posterior triangle of neck it arises from there and it is inserted as a superior angle to the root of spine now the fifth to eighth that is five six seven eight these last four they interdigitate with 
external oblique. They are inserted in the large triangular area over the inferior angle. That is, inferior angle is nothing but a scapula. So, it was the inside part in the large triangular area. So, there it is inserted. Right? The nerve supply is by C5, C6 and C7. So, these are all the roots of the brachial plexus, which I'll tell you later. The first and second are supplied by C5. The C6 is supplied by third and fourth. C7 is supplied by fifth. C7 part supplies fifth to eighth. So, the actions are it helps pulling the scapula forward around the chest wall to protract the upper limb. It steadies the scapula when carrying weight. Okay, when carrying heavy weights, it helps the uh, scapula to be stable. It helps in forced inspiration. So the other points are, now this is very important. Sometimes they ask how the ringing of sca scapula is seen. So when you have viva about scapula, they may ask you about this. So paralysis of serratus anterior, it causes winging of scapula. So winging of scapula, where, where you see the inferior angle and the medial border of scapula, which is prominent. The inferior angle of scapula is nothing but here. And see, suppose this is scapula, this is the inferior angle. So this inferior angle and the medial border is seen. So these are prominent and winging of scapula. So this is the last slide and these are important questions. Describe the female mammary gland under the following headings. Extent, structure, its lymphatic drainage, blood supply, nerve supply, clinical anatomy and development. Development of breast can sometimes be asked but it's not so frequent. But you can expect these questions. A to F. Then pectoral is major or minor. Clavic pectoral fascia. And in chapters, do not forget to draw diagrams. Diagrams are very important. Without diagrams, you can't support your answer. And stay home, stay safe. Do not go out. And thank you guys. Do like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And press the bell icon to get up to get updates. Thank you and have a great day.